All right, so today we're gonna to do two things. One, we're gonna talk about uh, DC resistance in a pickup and why it's a very unreliable way to gauge tone. Uh, it changes all the time, etc. We're also going to answer probably one of the bigger questions that I've gotten on the channel in the last few months is how the heck do you make pickups, manage parts, send orders out, do all that sort of stuff um, for dylantoxtone.com while well, you live in a motorhome and you drive all over the country. So we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. In order to address this whole DC resistance changing being unreliable thing, we're gonna do an experiment. We're gonna take a P90 that I made yesterday and we are going to measure it and we are going to then put it in the freezer. I'm gonna show you something kinda of cool. So we've got our fluke here. We're gonna measure this P90. Uh, let's use this soap bar that I made yesterday. It's about to go out in the mail. All right, 8.15K, 8.15. First of all, uh, at 10,000 winds, I typically try to wind them to 8.2, 8.3. So what does that mean? Well, does that mean I did something wrong? Uh, no. Okay, so that's great. Okay, so remember that number, 8.15. We're gonna take this pickup and we're gonna go put it in the freezer. Now this is not a science freezer, this is just a regular freezer with frozen burritos and black bean burgers and regular stuff in there. So, we're gonna leave that in there, we're gonna let it get cold, and while we let it get cold, we're gonna talk about how we manage uh, making pickups around here. Okay, so to get started, for those of you that are not familiar, I actually live in a 38-foot Forest River Georgetown XL, and uh, we pull our Jeep Wrangler behind it, and we run an entire operation out of it. Um, so in these two compartments right here, I think I've shared this before, but we'll get a little bit more in depth this time. There is all your parts. So we have um, cable parts, which is actually just overstocked now because we don't make cables anymore. I need to relabel that. Um, we've got our orders here. We've got some more overstock stuff here. Humbucker parts there. Random parts for other stuff, which we'll be using in a few minutes. Um, single coil parts uh, and other specialized weird humbucker stuff there. And then we've got a box here with a scale and a label printer. And my pickup winder is there. And then if we open this, it looks a little bit of a mess, but I've got it pretty well organized. The tool caddy that you've probably seen on some of our videos, as well as a bag full of tools and we have a magnet press in there and we also have a magnetizer in there to magnetize pickups so i guess what we're going to need today is we need this right here and i guess we're going to need some p90 covers as well Okay, so one of the biggest questions we get is, uh, how do I get the parts to me? Um, that's actually pretty simple. Uh, we use, we have total, I think, three vendors that we use for basically everything. Um, and I'm pretty, I'm, I stick to my vendors because they do me really well and I've been doing this long enough where I've kind of got that figured out. Um, and basically what I do is two things. One, uh, I time it where I'll have stuff shipped to like a buddy of mine's house that I'm gonna be near pretty soon. Um, more often though, we actually ship to uh, a UPS store. Um, you might not know this, but if you go on UPS, whatever it is, .com, um, you can have a package shipped to, to a UPS store, usually for like $5 or something. 
so it's it's typically not that big a deal to have parts shipped wherever you want in the country to a UPS store and that has saved me many times do I always get it right no I've gotten it wrong and we have had crazy back order issues with some stuff you know it has happened I'm not gonna lie um, but as the, the longer we do this the more I'm getting it figured out we've been living in this thing now for six seven seven months and um, actually 2020 has been our busiest year ever to the point where I'm you know we're not on a waiting list yet but it's getting busy so that's really cool all right, we got screws and springs for the pickups that are going out in this particular order. And the other ones actually don't need them. We've got a bunch of P90s going out today. We need to engrave these covers with our name, and we need to go check pickups, and then we need to go back to the freezer and get that P90 out and see what the deal is with that. Okay, so once uh, the pickups are built, that's the easy part well it's not the easy part that's the hard part um, I do obviously check them along every step of the way and make sure they're good um, and so these are all assembled so we just go through and double check them make sure everything's good until they're done they don't get my name on them And yes, I do use a Harbor Freight tool engraver to engrave all the pickups. It's the easiest way. And uh, that's kind of my final, once I test them, that's my final thing. And then we will make sure that they're all cleaned up and they have uh, all the wax off them and stuff. That humbucker goes with these two Tele pickups actually in a set which somebody ordered for a custom set, which is kind of cool. All right. That one goes there. That hardware goes with those. Oh, that other pickup is in the freezer. All right, we'll get back around to that in a couple of minutes. Now, let's talk shipping supplies. Over here on this side of the motorhome, we have a cabinet with shipping supplies so we need probably three of those actually probably need more i'm getting low on envelopes all right so basically when it comes to shipping u-line boxes and U-line padded envelopes and tape and we start boxing stuff up. People ask me, why do you just use discrete packaging with no fancy boxes or interesting packaging? Because people in boutique pickups usually have some kind of fancy wooden box and some kind of crazy whatever and my answer to that is the tone's not in the box it's in the box there's no reason to spend lots of money on packaging that you are just going to throw away and this whole thing about resale value of something that you're going to sell on reverb having to do with packaging i don't care about any of that just, I don't care about any of it. I'm all about making the guitar sound better. So packaging is stupid in my opinion. You're going to throw it away. And I mean, I could put fancy packaging, but I'm going to charge you 20 bucks extra to pay for it. So why would I do that to you? Uh, let's get the pickup out of the freezer. It has been in there for about a half an hour. Let's read the measurement on it now. C 
7.01. Do you remember when we started? This was 8.15. Okay. Here's why resistance of a pickup is the least important, not the least important, but it is way overused in how we determine tone. There are factors in this that are very interesting. Heat is a big deal. So we dropped 2K, or well, one, basically 1K, um, just by dropping the temperature of the pickup. We put it in the freezer for about a half an hour. The higher the ambient temperature that the pickup is measured at, the higher the resistance of that pickup. The lower the ambient temperature of that pickup is measured at, the lower the resistance. Therefore, if you look at published numbers for a pickup, let's say this one, this one, our published numbers, I think are 8.2K. That would be at normal, like 70 degree room temperature, normal circumstances, normal everything. If it's sitting in the UPS truck and you get it and it measures a little high or measures a little low, um, it's, it doesn't matter because nothing has changed about the pickup except for the ambient temperature. Many people will ask me, how hot are your pickups? And we've gone over this many times, but we'll talk about it again. The only time resistance matters in comparing two pickups is when all other factors are exactly the same. When, if I were to wind this pickup with the exact same wire, use the exact same magnets, and basically build the exact same pickup and put less or more wire on the bobbin and the resistance would change, that's the only time it matters. What happens is a lot of times people will make a comparison with a pickup. They'll take, let's say, our center punch pickups, uh, the one we just put in that box. That was a 10K pickup. Oh, that's too hot. Is it? No, it's not. Because you don't know what wire is on the bobbins. You don't know what the thickness of the insulation on the wire you don't know what magnet it is unless you have all of those details and then compare it to a pickup that is exactly the same with the only change being wind count, then it doesn't matter. And I know that people will say, yeah, but I use it as a loose, you know, whatever. I use it as like a loose guideline of how my pickups are gonna sound. I don't want a 14K pickup versus a 8K pickup, whatever. But you also can't go by that because you don't know what magnet is in it. You don't know how thick the wire is. For example, a very kind of classic sounding guitar. It's not the greatest pickups in the world, but a classic sounding guitar is that Epiphone Les Paul that we had last week that we took the pickups out of. They were 14K pickups with an Alnico 5 magnet. They did not sound or act like high output pickups. They were a little on the muddy side, but not terrible. They weren't terrible. They were actually, they sounded pretty good. If you were to say, I have 14K pickups to sell you, um, or I want you to put these 14K pickups in your guitar, you would be like, ah, that's too hot. I don't want them. If I don't tell you, this is the funniest part. This is the funniest part. And I've done this many times with customers and with players and guys playing my stuff. If I don't tell you what's in the guitar and you just play it and you go by what you think you know about pickups, your conclusions can be wildly different than what is on the paper. So this is, again, why it's important to buy your pickups, not based on the numbers published on the website, but understand from the pickup builder what goes into the pickup, what the goal of the pickup is, how the 
how it's designed um, and have that conversation and buy from somebody that you can have that conversation because if you can't, then you're literally shooting in the dark. And I know that probably flies in the face of what many other people say, but I mean, it is what it is. If you just go by numbers on a website, you're, sh you're shooting in the dark and you're probably going to miss. Now, unless you have a buddy that has the same stuff and you want to use the same stuff he has or etc. But even then, that fails a lot of times because if your amp is different, if your signal chain is different, um, your pedals that you use are different, um, your scale length of your guitar is different, um, you know, just because you put less you know, humbuckers in a Telecaster doesn't mean it's going to sound like a Les Paul. You know what I mean? Because scale length is different, all that kind of stuff. So buy your pickups from somebody that you can have a conversation with through email, through whatever, or you learn about how they do things and the, those goals of those pickups that they design align with yours. Then you have a better idea, not just reading numbers off of a piece of paper to get a sound. All right, so when it comes to shipping this stuff, back to shipping now, um, we have a fairly streamlined setup. Use a pretty widely used Shopify system, and we use a label maker, and we have a postal scale on board, and this is what we do. So basically, I'm going to label all of these orders up. Um, I've written on them what they are, and then I just go through the go through the deal and we print labels stick them to the boxes and send them on to the post office now what that usually means is I have to actually go find the local post office to me and sometimes depending on where we are in the country I might have to adjust shipping rates a little bit but that is why we charge you as the client a flat shipping rate because um, I do not like to pass that expense on to you since it was my choice to live in a motorhome if shipping is a little bit more expensive then I will take that up so that you um, don't have to pay that extra because every once in a while I'll lose I'll be on the wrong side of the country I'll go to ship something and uh, you know 595 for shipping or whatever and it cost me 695 and you know oh well but that's just the cost of doing business on my part so we end up having to do that every once in a while so here are today's orders we got um all over the united states we got berlin germany we got canada we ship to australia all the time we ship to england all the time uh we ship all over the place super fun stuff so I just want to give you a little insight to how we pull all this off. Nine times out of ten, it goes amazing. Every once in a while, we end up with a little backorder situation or something, but we're cleaning up around the edges, and it's working pretty good now. Uh, make sure you check out um, our live show on Thursday at 5 p.m. One of the other things, too, is uh, this video that you're watching right now has been live on YouTube for almost a week, but only for Patreon patrons. So we have started releasing our videos a week early to all of our folks over there on Patreon. So patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone if you want to uh, see it before anybody else sees it, have your questions answered before anybody else has them answered, and etc. You can go over there. And also, if you ask questions over there on Patreon, um, we try to feature those, well, we do feature those in our live videos on Thursday. I, I prioritize those, so I just want you to know that. Um, if you have any questions about that or need help with any of that, let me know. But that's it. Thanks for hanging out, and I guess we'll see you on Thursday.